What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and today we're gonna play with the Pallet 2S and we're gonna turn these several partial spools into my own spool. Welcome back guys, so yes, I do have the Pallet 2S. I've had it for a few months now actually, and I did a bunch of test prints with it and kind of been playing with it a little bit more. Uh, and I've just got it to its new home, which is here on my wall. And it's actually hooked up between my Mark 3S and the Ender 3 here. These are the two main printers I'm gonna use when uh, printing with this machine. So basically, why am I doing this experiment before I do a review video? I just thought this one alone deserved its own video. The other video is gonna be pretty long on how to use canvas and how to actually splice with the machine and tune it and things like that. It's gonna be a lot more in depth on that, but this one topic alone caught my eye. Things are releasing her pimp head. But this one topic alone caught my eye because I was in on one of the Facebook groups and they said they were using the palette to create spools. And due to the current you know, world issue, everyone's printing PPE. And I went ahead as well and I printed a 400 for a local hospital that needed some. And I'm left over with several near incomplete spools. Well, I don't wanna waste filament, especially if they reach out to me again and saying, hey, we'd like you to print some more. So I wanna make use of this. And what I found on this Facebook group is apparently you can use the palette and go ahead and create a spool. Basically you're telling it to print without the printer. So it's just gonna feed out the filament. And I have an empty filament.ca spool here and I'm gonna go ahead and use these and see if we can't make that work. Now the setup for this is gonna be pretty easy. Now up above, so up there, that is my rep box. That's mounted way up there on the wall. And two of these spools actually have a decent amount of filament on them. So I'm gonna mount those up there. The other two, I'm just gonna put here on these two printers and feed them up and in. And then I'll have the Bowden tube coming out and I'm just going to kind of self wind it on here. Uh, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but uh, I figured it'd be kind of cool to see how to do it, and I'll show you guys what I find out. All right, I'm just gonna do this with the cover off so you can see a little bit more, but we're gonna go do print modes, multi-spool, next, one, two, three, four, so select all of our spools, next, all PLA, it has to all be the same type. Start without a printer, and now we will let it do its thing, which I have no idea how long this is gonna take. One in. You can see it pulling each of these in as I give it a little nudge to push it in. And then number three, and then number four. All right, so now it's starting the multi-spool and it's gonna count how long my filament is, which is pretty cool. So it pushes it up and around. This is the buffer chamber and it's now pushing the filament out. It's taking all of roll one in and it's gonna take that all until the end. So once it starts coming out of the Bowden tube here, I'm going to get my other spool ready and then I will start uh, spooling it once it gets enough out of it. But uh, yeah, this is going pretty quick. So we've already got a meter filament created. Now you can do this with the four spools. You might be able to do it with more, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, at least with the four spools, I guess you could just keep it going, just reload one of the spools back in. So just while this is going, there are other modes that this could actually run. So there's the uh, random, so it will just make random segments of each color and kind of do info like that. Um, it can do selected uh, lengths as well. So there's actually quite a bit that this thing can do when it comes to multi-spools. It's very, very simple too. Now the only problem I've had so far has been with white. White has not wanted to splice well for me at all. I don't know why, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't like to splice well with other colors. I had issues when doing some of my test models and I only noticed because I was using white when I was doing my test models is the only one that I had a problem with, which was really a bummer uh, because it really limits things. I don't know if that's just because of the settings I was using but I just know that white was the one that gave me the most issue. So I'm gonna stop talking, I'm gonna let this run, and I'll let you guys watch, and we'll see what happens when this is all done. Whoa. All right, so here it is at the end. It cut it flat. And now it's uh, heating up and it 
heat up one end and then it shot spool two down and is now joining that. Now it's cooling, that's why I got real loud there. And now it is cooling inside that splice core. Okay, now it's feeding it along and the splice is complete. So another very cool thing about, once you're done creating your spool, it's actually measuring all the filament and it's pretty exact. I mean, this machine is meant to be exact when doing these type of measurements. So you could just put a note here on the side of your spool, oh, I've got 20 meters or five meters or whatever you have, and you'll know exactly how much is on there. So if you need to do a print, a one-off print, a prototype, oh, this is gonna take 20 meters of filament. Well, I've got 22 on this spool. Hey, that's a good use of it then. Well, this is boring, so I'm gonna finish this up and I'll show you guys the end result. All right, so I just finished and now this came out. So this is run out. One or more filament inputs have run out. Would you like to reload any of the inputs? And as you can see, all the ones that have run out are all flashing, so it's all four. If I scroll all the way out, you can see there's just the tails of each of them. So I could say yes and load more in if I want to, but for right now, I don't. I do have some more partial spools, but I think for right now, getting these four onto one is a great success. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit no. And then Pal is clearing the filament. And now it's feeding the rest of it through the buffer here. And I can finish pulling it out once it does that. There it is. And I've got it out now. Wait, 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 wait. And there, yeah, okay. Shame for the past, pause. So I went onto the Facebook group for the mosaic palette and I reached out and said, hey, is there a faster way to do this? Because doing that, that couple, what, 30 meters in like almost an hour was a long time. This thing runs pretty slow. I mean, it's not terribly slow, but it's slow. There is, in fact, a beta firmware that you can install on this to make it go stupid fast. Check this out. But yeah, so you saw how fast that was going. I was able to make whoa, this huge spool here. I was able to make this spool here. And I was able to make this spool here in like two or three hours. Oh, way, way faster than what the other one was, uh, the speed that was going at. This one is called Ludicrous Speed, and it actually is pretty doggone fast. So you have to wind it pretty quickly. Uh, I did my best to keep my winds as straight as possible for all of these. So what I'm gonna do is uh, eventually, I'm just gonna get a couple spools of a bunch of the filaments. So I've been using all of my old MakerBox Easy Boxes and some Mondo Boxes, taking all of the big um, Easy Box ones. Well, I have the Explorer, the Explorer? The everything, everything box. But either way, the Easy Box has these huge spools of uh, the PLA and it's easy box so they're all PLAs and they're all by the same company so they mend together pretty well now I've only had I think one issue but I was able to resplice it and it was no big issue after that but yeah so I'm putting all these together put each of these on rolls so four rolls of these onto a spool and then I'll attach it to a big one it's going to take a while it's a long way around but it's the fastest way to reduce the amount of issues I did run into a few clogs here and there but it was pretty easy to just remove the screws and pull that off pull out the clog and start again um, it did suck when it was like the middle of a big roll like this like this is pretty heavy right here this is I think 150 meters on this spool uh, so it, it's going along pretty good but it just takes time to do but ludicrous speed really helps so what I'll do is I'll leave an email link down below that you guys can email it's a Johnny at uh, mosaic and he's the one that has this beta firmware so if you want to try it out uh, you can but remember it is beta it's not production yet so uh, things I want them to do with this is I would love to have some type of speed adjustment on here you can speed it up or slow it down I also like a pause feature because I was doing this and then one of the kids needed help and I couldn't just stop. So I kind of just had to like set my spool down and let this all this filament just kind of get on the floor. That was kind of crummy, but a pause feature would be absolutely clutch for this because uh, stop just stops it and I don't want to stop. I just want to pause for like an hour. Let me take care of what I need to take care of and come back and do it.
But either way, it's working out fantastic and I will also put a link down to the Mosaic Facebook group because they're the ones that gave me this, uh, this, this path to go down. So I would asked this, someone who already asked this was working with Mosaic to get this framework created. So total props goes to him, but I'll put links to all of that stuff down below so you guys can check it out yourself. And uh, yeah, so back to old me and we'll finish up this video. All right, so I lost that uh, ending file from like two days ago. I don't know where it went, but it's okay. So either way, this is a really cool feature. You guys should check it out if you have this machine or if you're looking for something to be able to do more than just multicolor prints. This is more of a utility that you can use this thing for. And if you're a long time MakerBox subscriber like I am, I literally have hundreds of sample spools that I would love to spool together and be able to use it quickly. I mean, having all of this, I don't care what it looks like. When I'm prototyping and I'm trying to figure something out, I don't want to use my 30, 40 dollars a roll, you know, if I'm using ProtoPasta of $30 for 500 grams, like it's expensive filament. I want to use something cheap and easy, but if I can just put them all together and make, you know, utility spools like this, that is just honestly, I think that's like the greatest feature. Multicolor printing is cool and all, but this, being able to do this with your filament and not have to worry about a run out sense or something like that, this is cool stuff. So I hope you guys check it out. Make sure you check out the links down below. If you want to see this, make sure you see the links for that down below. Uh, I do, before I leave though, I have to thank 3D Printing Canada for giving Mosaic Manufacturing my name to let me try this out. They're the ones that advocated. They love my videos. They've actually supported me for a long time and I have some pretty big projects coming up with them as they sent me uh, 20 or 30 some different colors of filament to use with this. They were awesome. So I have to thank them and I have to thank Mosaic Manufacturing for sending this to me. I'm sorry this video is a little bit later than when I was hoping it was gonna be, Like, but this isn't like the unboxing video. This is more of just like a, hey, it's a cool feature, check it out. But yeah, this video's gone long enough. So thank you to all of them and thank you to you guys for watching. You guys are awesome. I'm coming back, content's coming soon and lots of it, stuff I already recorded and new content like this. So make sure you guys subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like. If not, hey, I understand. Uh, if you wanna help out again, check those links down below and that's gonna be it. So you guys are awesome. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy printing.